the ultimate compliment is to be considered an asset by those who know you. But what exactly does that mean? And how do we get there? I believe that there is a less discussed approach to becoming a person of value, a person who is successful, respected by others, and fulfilled. It's somewhere between the hustle culture and the ease and flow of manifestation. This podcast is designed to be a resource for the ambitious, the relentless, and the rare who are breaking societal norms, going against the grain, and are open to unconventional practices as we study what it takes to be a true asset in every area of life. My hope is that you'll find this podcast unique and like it enough to share it with a friend and maybe even one day join us at one of our in-person events. Enjoy. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another podcast episode of She's an Asset with me, your host, Autumn Clifford. As always, I'm honored to be in your ears. I appreciate your time. Um, That is the one thing that we never, ever get back. And so I just want you to know how much I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to spend with me to listen to what I have to say. And I also want you to know that I prayed before this podcast episode, like I do every episode, asking for what needs to come out of me, what you needed to hear to come out. And so today, what I want to talk with you about is loneliness and a little bit different than what mainstream will put out there of loneliness. So if you've ever felt lonely, or maybe you feel it sometimes on and off, um, this is for you. So this is, again, very intuitively led podcast. I There's no scripts. I I write down topics throughout the week when something comes to me, but there's I have no checkpoints. I have no chapters. <laughs> I have no outline. This is just me riffing, um, kind of doing my thing. So if you're here, you're still listening. If this sounds of any interest to you, there is a message here for you, which is really important um, that you know that. Before we get going, um, I'd like to shout out our sponsor, which is Blue Monarch Co. Jewelry. Go check the line out. Their uh, link is in the show notes. It is a very inspirational and motivational and meaningful jewelry company that was created by two law enforcement officers. And one has been a client of mine for a few years and um, she is incredible. She and her husband worked the aftermath of Ground Zero. Had to, Both of them had to medically retire early and they created this company and a jewelry line to give everybody else hope um, and inspire them and, and create these beautiful pieces that especially in times where we are We need a little motivation or we need to know that we are supported. This is what that jewelry line does. So go check them out anywhere you can find, uh, anywhere on social media. They are Blue Monarch Co. Um, And again, their website is in the show notes. Today I'm doing this without a video, so you're not actually going to be able to see any videos of of this podcast episode because one, I am overcoming a cold, um, and two, I'm... This episode is kind of an emotional one for me, to be honest. This is very personal, um, which I've never had a problem being very personal um, and being very raw and upfront because I feel like that's me being authentic and how I can best serve you is to discuss the things that I have been through or I'm going through um, or clients that I'm coaching them through, um, the topics that we typically talk about here. So... I want to talk with you about loneliness and here's really what it is, is it's this feeling of where you don't fit in anywhere or feeling like you don't belong. I have felt this my whole life uh, in different areas with different people and in different scenarios. And I want to say Here's here's what I believe now that I'm, again, I'm 34, I do a lot of personal development and personal growth work. I do a lot of tuning within. Um, and so what I've learned is the blessing of me feeling this way has always been the universe pushing me to tune into myself, to understand that I belong with myself and to stop looking on the outside of myself to fit in and to fill those voids of loneliness. 
I realize that now. And I think I want to say that before the end of the podcast, because I don't want this episode to come off as negative, whiny, um, woe is me. Because if you know me, if you know me for one second, you know that is not my vibe. But the vibe also is being honest, where we have all been um, and we can all relate to. And this is something that I can relate to. From a very young age, I just felt like I didn't fit in. My mom would always highlight, like if there was I like this, two's company, three's a crowd for me. Um, I never did well in groups. I never did. It was always, I always did best one-on-one uh, -on -one with people. And then when I got to be more than that, I just never felt like I belonged. I just have always felt a little bit different. And what I'm coming to realize is that, do you know the majority of people feel that way? And then also be careful because society takes advantage of people who who feel this way and then they'll go and say well it's because you're this and they'll put some sort of idea in a person's brain that they are like an outcast or that they are something other than what they actually are and and, and this is just normal here's what i've learned this is actually normal it's a yearning that your intuition is asking you to tune in. You don't fit in because what is going on is you're trying so hard to get other people to like you. You're trying really hard to belong with other people. The problem with that is you will never belong with anybody other than yourself. You have to belong with yourself first. And this is important because this is the foundation. This is the baseline of your self-confidence, your self-belief, your self-esteem especially with our children. So as a child, if you do not feel like you belong, you're telling yourself these stories. I want you to think about this. You are, t you are creating a belief system that you do not belong. You don't belong. How disempowering is that? It's incredibly disempowering. I know, and I bet you know, to some extent, but I know because it has, it has been the story that I bought into since I've been young, young, young. And that was also, it turned into a defense mechanism when, you know, I didn't fit in with different groups and I got bullied and people didn't, certain people don't want to be my friends. And I just didn't fit into so, like different social groups and all these things. I'm like, wow, I don't fit in anybody. I just don't belong. And so what happens over a period of time is this profound loneliness. And it's like, you can be in the same room as other people, but you feel so lonely. And my suggestion to you, my, from what I have learned in my experience, what that actually is, is disconnection from yourself, disconnection from your intuition, uh, disconnection from, you can call it your soul, your spirit, you can call it God. It is, but it's a disconnection from self. Okay. And that is what has that void. And I know this because I've been healing this. And I will tell myself all the time, I don't fit in with this person. I don't fit in with this group. I don't fit in with this. I don't fit in with this. I don't fit in with And then um, one of the things that I do, I highly recommend that you all do it. Uh, I lead my clients to do this is um, like creative journaling um, or channeling, like channel journaling. Uh, what is it called? Or sometimes I'll call it automatic writing if you want to be less conventional, but or more conventional. But I'm, you know me, I'm way out of the box. So I'll sit down and I'll just act, like write, and I will get into a meditative state where I'm not really thinking. I'm just writing, and I was doing that recently, and that's really what came through for me is what I'm teaching you today. Is I have just been so disconnected from self, trying to please other people, trying to make them like me, trying to make them love me and trying to fit in. And if I'm honest, I would say that I have done that in business as well. I've done that in my personal life. I've done that in my professional life. And the argument will be, I can hear the argument is, well, if I don't do that, then I'm not going to be successful in, at work. And I think that's a whole different rabbit hole we can go down. And I do understand that sometimes in order to survive in these careers that we have chosen, in these toxic environments that we have chosen to put ourselves in, 
I want you to understand I'm very clear on what I'm saying because you have a choice. And this is very upsetting to some of you. Totally, I get it. But we have a choice. We have 100% a choice on whether we are going to stay in an environment that sucks our soul or we are not. And now sometimes it's not the right time for us to move on. We have to learn to appreciate you know, the gifts that we have been given and for, we have to learn to appreciate what this situation has given to us before we can move on. I understand that, been there. But also sometimes what happens is there's other situations where we just become victim to our circumstances. And I don't get down with that and I don't believe in that. I can do that. I have that tendency. What I've learned is that's when I'm completely disconnected from myself and I have lost faith. I have lost hope and I'm not listening to my intuition and I'm not seeing any upsides. All I'm seeing are downsides and that's what I'm choosing to focus on. So I want you to understand, I can, I relate, I can hear you talking to me and being like, but autumn, but autumn, but autumn, but I'm just telling you what I've learned and something that will help you if you can understand where, this point of view and understand that we really are all in control of our own lives. You are con in control of your brain and your thoughts, even though it feels like we aren't. And we can choose to change our perspectives. And it's hard. <laughs> it's like we can do all that and it's really hard. It's hard. It's hard to grow. It's hard to look in the mirror. It's hard to look at our into our past. It's hard to do the inner child stuff. It's hard to realize that sometimes that that loneliness, that deep longing for belonging that we're looking for is the we need to belong with ourselves. And it's increasingly hard to accept that many times we're just not accepting ourselves. The antidote to this in my mind and what my life has demonstrated has been when I belong with myself, I no longer feel lonely. And not only that, when I belong with myself, I become magnetic. Because, because the truth is, is we all want to feel that way. And we are all caught up, especially now, especially in society. We are caught up in a very busy society. The world is going round and round. Our phones don't stop. Our emails don't stop. Our computers are always on. Our TVs are always on. Our radios are always on. Like we are, con it is constant, constant. And you've got kids and you've got family and everybody needs you and you got to feed them and put them to sleep. And then you got to go to sleep and you got to get up and go to work, but you've got to get the kids ready and you got to get the family ready. And right. And then on the weekends, there's sports and in the evenings, there's things. And when do you have time for your spouse? When do you have time for you? Like, I mean, it's just constant. Okay. Please know they've set society up like this on purpose. So it is not done by mistake. It is meant to keep us all incredibly busy, disconnected from self, because when we are disconnected from ourselves, we're easy to manipulate. We're easy to control because what we all want to do is feel better and we don't have the time to spend to make us feel better. So then we just need a pill to make us feel better. So now we're hooked on big pharma and I don't really believe it's any fault to our own. I just think we have to wake up and so that we um, can get ahead of this pattern or we can break free from the societal norm and we can do this ourselves. So the connection to yourself is the antidote to your loneliness. Your loneliness is a clue. It is feedback. It is your inner guidance system or your intuition telling you, hey, you don't feel fulfilled anywhere because you're not fulfilled here. And so everybody's looking for that. So when you start to like yourself, and you start to feel good with yourself, you start to have concerts with yourself, you start to cook yourself healthy food, you start to put healthy food in your body, you start to treat yourself like you would treat your significant, you know, partner or your best friend or your child, somebody who you really love. When you start to treat yourself that way, you, it changes. It just, you, there's the, vo it's the void starts to heal. 
And, and so I wish I could tell you it's this simple. It is not this simple. There's a lot of healing work going back into, you know, recognizing when this wound, when this um, feeling first started, going back there, sitting with that, tending to that, tending to that, you know, inner child. There's a lot of that that needs to occur. But I do believe that the recognition of that is important. Now, a lot of us will be spend our time, we're so busy and we're filling it with friends and filling it with social things and filling, filling, filling. We're just filling our time all the time because we don't actually want to feel these feelings. And if this is you, I need you to take a step back. I need you to ask yourself like, whoa, am I running from a feeling? Am I running because I don't want to feel something? Am I am am I purposely disconnecting from self and disconnecting from everybody else because I don't want to feel hurt because everybody's always let me down? These are stories in your head. These are stories, these are perceptions that have got to get healed. So I think what's really important, first thing is to become aware of that. So I have felt lonely and I felt like I didn't belong my whole life as a recap. But what I've learned is that that was me being disconnected from myself. And so now, so I want you to reflect and see where you're feeling disconnected from yourself. Where are you feeling lonely? Where do you feel like you don't belong? I could tell you stories. I mean, I, literally, I, I could tell you, I felt like I belonged when I was like connected with myself and I was doing my thing. And then all of a sudden, like shit would pop off. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't belong here. And while that was occurring, I simultaneously noticed the pattern of like shit. And I also was not listening to my intuition. I was not feeling how I felt. I was shoving my feelings. I was eating a bunch of food, shoving my feelings down. That is my tendency. So that's what I do. When I don't want to feel something, I numb out. TikTok scroll for days, but that's like more recent. Although I, I do love TikTok. You guys know I love to watch people getting scare pranked and love watching people fall down. Like I do love that. <laughs> So I do, I do do that. I do that for entertainment, but I will do it. I will, and I will tell myself, I will be like, oh fuck, we are numbing. And I put the phone down because I will, I will like have this come to Jesus moment with myself. Like, whoops, we're numbing. So I do that or I'll, I'll like binge Netflix. And like, this is more than just like, sometimes we all just need to take a day. I get it and check out. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes, you know, we have our, we have like our set time, like maybe from like seven to nine at night or whatever, like you just check out, whatever. But I'm talking about like days of just not feeling anything. And it can be for like Netflix or, you know, whatever, binging the television, numbing with alcohol, numbing with marijuana, numbing with sex, constantly having sex, whether it be with your partner or multiple partners, constantly numbing, numbing out, checking out staying so busy that you you just you're not taking the time that you know you need to take you know it because there's been times in your life where you have taken and you have felt great but something happened traumatic experiences happened somebody let you down something let you down and you felt it has not been safe for you to slow down and feel and so you don't and we every time you do slow down and feel you feel devastated and you feel this hurt that you never want to feel. But the problem is, is you keep shoving it down. And I want to tell you, it will manifest. I know that because I got injured. <laughs> look at look at my back injury, completely changed my life. Um, you know, I'm still in therapy for that. My horseback riding is part of that therapy. My chiropractor is part of that therapy. I have to do yoga as, prescri as prescribed by my doctor. Um, so, you know, that's all me being disconnected from myself. So I just wanted to say, I just think this is very meaningful and very much something that nobody's talking about. And at least I'm not hearing anybody talk about this loneliness. Well, I saw a TikTok that really resonated with me about loneliness and how like nobody's talking about how when you feel like you don't resonate with the people around you, you you feel lonely. But like it's not because you're physically lonely. It's more like you're emotionally lonely. But then I connected that with, yeah, but we're also emotionally lonely because we're not connected to ourselves. That does not mean 
You don't need to put better people. You don't need to get around better people who understand you. I'm not saying any of that. But the first step for you to really find that belonging and overcome this like lonely feeling is to connect with yourself. And so you're probably like at this point, well, Autumn, how do I do that? How do I connect with myself? I think for everybody it's different. I think for everybody it's different. You know, the old autumn would have been like, well, you do these three things. Here's the formula. <laughs> I don't really think there is a formula. I've been teaching this for nine years. I've been teaching it professionally for nine years. I have been implementing this my whole life. Um, I, If you can hear this in my voice, I'm overcoming a cold. So just mind your business. Don't be making comments about the stuff he knows <laughs> and me sounding nasally. Um, yeah, I grew up. If you didn't know this, I grew up being able to talk to angels. So kind of visible uh had an invisible friend since I've been like one and a half, two. Um, my mother's a shaman, meaning she's a highly spiritual person, teacher, healer. She encouraged that, meaning she was just like, Oh, because like I was I would like my my invisible friend, her name was Maggie. She's my guardian angel, really believe in that. And, um, and so I have been, you know, from a very young age working with, you know, spirituality and I attended Sunday school and I've read the Bible. I don't remember it. I was young. I remember some things about it. I have deep conversations with my friends and family about religion and spirituality. And like, I do all these things. I'm, you know, me, we're going on a detour, which is what we do. <laughs> um, but I'm telling you all of this because I've I've I have practiced getting disconnected from self and then getting connected to self. Disconnection from self, getting connected to self. Because there's not it's not a destination. It's just this is life, actually. Connection, disconnection. Connection, disconnection. And if you can understand that it's a rhythm, then you're gonna be a heck of a lot more resilient. You're gonna be a lot better off. Yeah, in your life, because you won't, you're not gonna shit all over yourself when you get when you start feeling these feelings, right? And and you can catch it sooner than later. So, what I things I do, I do what I love in order to connect back to myself. I I gravitate doing to things that I love, things that I love. I'm a rapper, and I'm a singer that you guys have didn't know. Uh, and I have concerts. I've done this. I've literally done this since I can even remember. I was young, young, young. Uh, my family's very big into music. My grandfather was a carpenter and he built stereo. Like he had this big, big, beautiful stereo system. And um, my aunt has that, but my mom, she had like a really nice stereo system. And had an old record player. And when I was a kid, like young, 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 I would listen to that. But then like, as I got older, she got the stereo system was like surround music, surround sound. So like, and I would have the whole basement to myself and I would have these concerts. And then like my, my dad had a friend who was a DJ back in the day, but way before, this is way before, I mean, the kids listening to this are going to be like, I don't even know what a CD is, but, um, my generation and older will understand this. Like my my dad had a friend who was a DJ and he'd make me mix CDs because this was before like we even had a computer. Uh, so he would do that for me and like I would have these concerts and it was a way for me to just disconnect from the world and just be so connected to myself and dancing and singing and just kind of in my mind performing to absolutely nobody, but I was performing and um, that translated into my martial arts and I would connect to myself there, which is why... I really bring up the self-protection piece and the personal development piece that is so one, it's so big because if you have one with the other, it's the ultimate empowerment and um, you create serious self-connection because you have to. Um, and then, you know, I do things like I, I enjoy walks. I enjoy meditation. I enjoy journaling. I enjoy reading. I enjoy listening to podcasts. Um, personal development that feed and nourish my soul, riding my horse, being with a horse, um, being with my dog, training my dog. I have, if you guys don't know, I have a Belgian Malinois. She's my protection dog. 
at home. We call her our house Malinois. <laughs> and, um, and I, and I've, if I have to be right on my game, anything that you have to be present with helps you to be connected to yourself. Whatever you have to be present doing, playing basketball. I love to play basketball. It's one of the things that really bring me to the present. I go, I talk a bunch of shit to all the girls. I laugh the whole time. I could can't make a fucking basket to save my life. Although I'm definitely Michael Jordan reincarnated. Hello. And, um, and, you know, I just laugh and have a great time, but I'm very much present. I'm in the moment connection to self. That's things that help me recognizing how I feel. You can start just by noticing where your breath is right this moment. Where were you breathing? Are you breathing in your chest? Or are you breathing in your stomach? How does it like take in, take inventory? How does your body feel? How are you feeling? Start at your feet. How do your toes feel? How do your feet feel? If you've been working and walking on them or you're in high heels, they're probably sore. How are your legs feeling? You know, how is your stomach? Is it tight? Is it tense? Are you sucking it in? How is your chest? Is it tight? What's going on? Do you have a headache? You know, one of the things is um, you can close your mouth if you can breathe out of your nose. I can't really. And check to see if like your scalp, a lot of times we're so tense in our, in our heads and in our scalps. Are you like, what's up with that? Is yours tense? So it's really just about tuning in and checking in again. It's not your fault if you haven't checked in with yourself in a while. Society doesn't want you to. It's just my job to come here and remind you. Because if you can be present with yourself, you can understand that your disconnection from yourself is a lot of our ailments and problems and and causes a lot of things for us. If you can understand that, you can connect back to yourself. You do realize that you are incredibly powerful, right? Because your connection to yourself is the connection to the divine power, whether you believe in God or the universe or everything, all of the above, like I do, that is, you're here, if you're connected to yourself, and then you actually get out there and implement what it is that you're passionate about, you are fucking unstoppable. You will be unstoppable. And they don't want that because then you are not going to be easy to control. It's very important that you understand and you connect this, which is why I'm a huge advocate for both becoming very connected to yourself through personal development and self-protection practices because you will ultimately continue to be unstoppable. Okay, this is what I have for you today. If you haven't, just so you know, we're, we're offering online situational awareness courses. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, definitely please do by the time this come this uh, episode releases um we have we'll, we will have already um done one online which i'm excited about i've you know i've been traveling new england offering these for the last year and a half and huh, very successfully if i don't say so myself um we've been in corporate we've been in people's houses we've been in um companies across the state, down to Massachusetts, up to the um, Canadian border of Maine. And I'm definitely ready to get this information and knowledge in uh, more people's hands. Uh, this is very important to me. So keep an eye out on that. Come hang out on the socials. If you know somebody who needs to hear something in this podcast episode, do me a favor, either share it on your social or just send it directly to them. We're going to be starting a... Uh, part of the show that's going to be called Ask Autumn. And if you have a question that you want answered, I want you to email me, autumn at autumnclifford.com or PM me or DM me anywhere that you can connect with me on the socials. And I, myself and my team will compile um, a list of questions that I will be answering on the show. Eventually at some point, maybe we'll be doing it live. But as of right now, we're going to be compiling those things um, and I will answer them over the air. Okay. I hope you found this impactful. Go connect with yourself. I love you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the She's an Asset podcast. If you wouldn't mind, 
could you please share this out? The only way we grow and I can get this out to as many people as possible is with your help. So we're kind of in this together. And the good thing is, is I know you have my back. So uh, I want to say thank you and ask for you to share the show. And if we're not hanging out in the socials, I hope that you'll come and hang out with me. I'm Autumn Clifford pretty much everywhere. Thank you so much. See you next time.